I want to start our journey with a story. One that resonates deeply with the message I hope to share with you. It's a story about John. A young man I once knew who dreamed of building his own business. John had an idea. A passion, really. But like many great ideas, it required not just creativity and vision, but an immense amount of hard work. John started in his small garage, working long hours, often stretching late into the night. His friends would tell him to take a break, to relax a bit, but John knew something that many overlooked. He knew that the road to success is not paved with occasional effort or half-hearted attempts. It's built with the bricks of hard work, determination, and an unwavering commitment to one's goals. Now let's pause here and reflect on John's journey. You see, like John, each one of us has our own garage, a starting point where our dreams begin to take shape. It's in these humble beginnings where our work ethic is tested, where our dedication to our craft is forged. Hard work, ladies and gentlemen, is not just a concept. It's a fundamental pillar that upholds the structure of our ambitions. But why is hard work so critical? It's simple. Hard work translates into personal growth. It's the engine that drives us forward, pushing us to learn, to adapt, and to overcome the challenges we face. When we commit to working hard, we're not just investing time and effort into a project or a job. We're investing in ourselves. John's story didn't end in that garage. His relentless hard work led to small successes, which compounded over time. He faced setbacks, of course. We all do. But with each setback, he worked even harder, learning from his mistakes, refining his strategies, and continuously pushing forward. That's the essence of hard work. It's not just about doing something repeatedly, it's about doing it better each time, learning, growing, and evolving as we proceed. Today, think about your own garage moments. Those times when the task at hand seemed daunting, when the hours were long, and the rewards seemed distant. Reflect on how those moments shaped you, how the hard work you put in laid the foundation for your future successes. Don's story is not unique. It's a narrative shared by countless successful individuals across various fields. The common thread in all their stories is hard work. As we delve deeper into this topic, remember John's garage. Remember that the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. And often that step is hard work. Now let's take a moment to consider the reality of success. It's a path fraught with challenges, obstacles, and often setbacks. This journey is not for the faint-hearted. It's for those who are willing to put in the effort day in and day out, even when the results are not immediately visible. I remember meeting a businessman once, a self-made individual who had reached the pinnacle of success. His story was not one of overnight triumph, but of years of relentless dedication and hard work. He told me something that I've never forgotten. Success is like an iceberg. What people see is the tip, the accomplishments, the accolades. But what they don't see, the larger part hidden beneath the water, is the sacrifice, the failures, the countless hours of effort. This is the truth about achieving anything significant in life. It's not easy. If it were, everyone would do it. It's about doing what others are not willing to do, about pushing beyond your comfort zone. It's about waking up early, staying up late, and giving your all to your dreams and ambitions. But why do we put ourselves through this? Why do we choose the path of most resistance? It's because the pursuit of success is not just about the destination. It's about who we become in the process. Each challenge we face and overcome, each setback that we bounce back from, molds us into stronger, more resilient individuals. Let's think about the great achievers in history, the pioneers in their fields. They all had one thing in common. They worked hard, much harder than their peers. They understood that greatness comes from doing the small things consistently, day after day, year after year. These are the small things that, while they may seem insignificant in isolation, compound over time into extraordinary results. I've seen this principle in action time and time again. Take for example a young athlete I once knew. She had talent, yes, but more importantly, she had an unmatched work ethic. While others trained, she trained harder. While others rested, she practiced. And over time, she outpaced her peers, not just because of her talent, but because of her relentless pursuit of excellence. This is a lesson for all of us, no matter our field, be it business, arts, sports, or any other. The principle remains the same. 
Hard work is the great equalizer. It can bridge the gap between where we are and where we want to be. Now you might be thinking, but what if I work hard and still don't succeed? That's a valid concern. But let me tell you this. Hard work always pays off. Maybe not in the ways we initially envision, but it does. Sometimes the reward for our hard work is not the achievement of our goal, but the lessons we learn, the character we build, and the people we become in the process. This is the essence of true success. It's not just about the accolades or the recognition. It's about the indomitable spirit that grows within you each time you push past your perceived limits. It's about the knowledge that you gave your all, that you pushed through when things were tough. Remember that the path to success is not a straight line. It's a winding road filled with hurdles. But it's those very hurdles that prepare us for the destination. They are the building blocks of our success story. So, embrace the hard work, the challenges, and the journey. For in these, the real treasures of success are found. Let's carry this thought with us. Hard work may not guarantee success, but without it, there is no success. Keep this in mind as we navigate the ups and downs of our path. With hard work, resilience, and a never-give-up attitude, success is not just a possibility, it's an inevitability. Understanding the importance of hard work, let's now turn our focus to a crucial element in the journey toward success. Setting clear goals. The process of setting goals is akin to setting a destination on a map before embarking on a voyage. Without a clear destination, no amount of hard work or effort will lead us to where we truly want to be. Picture this. A ship leaving harbor without a destination. No matter how capable the crew or how sturdy the ship, without a clear course, it will drift aimlessly and may never reach a meaningful destination. Similarly, in our lives, without clear goals, our efforts, no matter how intense, may not lead us to the success we desire. So, how does one set clear goals? It begins with introspection and a deep understanding of what we truly desire. Goals should not be set on a whim or based on others' expectations. They should reflect our deep aspirations and values. They're personal and uniquely ours. Consider a young entrepreneur I once met. She didn't set out to start a business just to make money. Her goal was to revolutionize the way people think about health. Her business was a means to achieve that larger goal, which was deeply rooted in her personal values and beliefs. Once you have identified what it is that you truly want, the next step is to articulate your goals in a clear, specific, and measurable way. Specific goals are like stars guiding us clearly through the night sky. For instance, instead of setting a goal like, I want to be successful, specify what success looks like for you. Does it mean building a business worth a certain amount, writing a best-selling novel, or becoming the best in your field? The more specific your goal, the clearer your path towards achieving it. The importance of setting deadlines cannot be overstated. A goal without a deadline is just a dream. Deadlines create a sense of urgency and help us prioritize our actions. They force us to organize our resources and time so that we can move steadily towards our goals. In my experience, the most successful people are those who set deadlines and then work tirelessly towards meeting them making adjustments along the way as necessary. It's also crucial to write down your goals. There's immense power in the act of writing. It makes your goals tangible and serves as a constant reminder of what you are working towards. Display your written goals where you can see them daily. Let them be the first thing you see in the morning and the last thing you check at night. This simple act keeps your goals at the forefront of your mind, constantly aligning your thoughts and actions with your objectives. But setting goals is just the beginning. The real magic happens when we take consistent action towards achieving them. This is where hard work and goal setting come together to create a symphony of success. Each step taken towards a goal, no matter how small, is a step in the right direction. Remember, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. And it's the accumulation of these steps that leads to extraordinary achievements. It's also important to review and adjust your goals regularly. As we grow and evolve, so do our aspirations. What seemed like a worthy goal a year ago might not resonate with us today. Regularly reviewing our goals allows us to stay aligned with our true aspirations and makes the journey towards achieving them more relevant and fulfilling. Now let me tell you about a principle I've always found fascinating, the Pareto Principle, also known as the 80-20 Rule. It states that roughly 80% of the effects come from 20% of the causes. Applied to goal setting, this principle suggests that a majority of our results come from a few key actions. 
Focusing on these key actions can significantly enhance our efficiency and effectiveness in achieving our goals. In practice, this means prioritizing tasks and focusing on those that will have the greatest impact on our goals. It's about working smarter, not just harder. This approach requires discipline and the ability to discern which actions will yield the greatest results. It's a skill that can be developed over time, and it's invaluable in the pursuit of success. As you embark on your goal-setting journey, remember that the road will not always be smooth. There will be challenges and setbacks, but it's important to stay committed to your goals. Every setback is an opportunity to learn and grow. Every challenge is a chance to demonstrate your resolve and commitment to your dreams. As we delve into the essence of what truly drives success, we must discuss a quality that stands as a cornerstone in the architecture of achievement, the power of persistence. The unwavering commitment to never give up is the force that turns the impossible into the possible, dreams into realities. It's the steadfast resolve that navigates us through the stormy seas of challenges toward the shores of success. Let's consider the story of a young writer, Emily, who dreamed of publishing her novel. Day after day, he faced rejection letters, each one a sting to her aspirations. Yet she persisted. With each rejection, she honed her skills, refined her manuscript, and sent it out again. Her journey wasn't easy, filled with moments of doubt and the temptation to abandon her dream. But Emily understood that the path to achieving her goal was paved with persistence. Eventually, her perseverance paid off. Her novel was published not because she was the most talented writer, but because she refused to give up. This story of Emily isn't unique but echoes a universal truth. The journey towards any worthwhile goal is often littered with obstacles. These challenges test our resolve, our dedication, and our commitment. But it is in the face of these challenges that persistence becomes our greatest ally. Consider the bamboo tree, a symbol of resilience and strength in many cultures. When the bamboo seed is planted, it doesn't sprout immediately. In fact, for the first several years, there's no visible sign of growth despite proper care. But beneath the soil, something remarkable happens. The bamboo is developing a root system vast and deep enough to support the incredible growth it will undergo. And then, in the fifth year, the bamboo tree grows up to 80 feet tall in just six weeks. This growth is a result of the unseen persistence during those silent years. This metaphor of the bamboo tree applies to our endeavors. Often the progress in our pursuits isn't immediately visible. The results of our hard work may seem to languish beneath the surface. But like the bamboo, we are growing, strengthening, and preparing for the moment of breakthrough. Persistence is about trusting this process, believing in the work we're doing even when the results aren't immediately evident. Now let's explore another aspect of persistence. Adaptability. Persistence doesn't mean repeating the same actions blindly, expecting different results. It means having the flexibility to adapt, to learn from setbacks, and to approach challenges with new strategies. It's about having the grit to endure, but also the wisdom to evolve. Remember, every successful person has faced failure. They've all had moments when their goals seemed out of reach. What separates them from the rest is their response to these setbacks. Instead of giving up, they persisted. They learned from their failures, adapted their strategies, and continued their pursuit with renewed vigor. Persistence, therefore, is not just a matter of endurance. It's a dynamic process of growth, learning, and adaptation. It's about maintaining your vision and adjusting your path as needed. It's about being resilient in the face of adversity and flexible enough to navigate through it. As we consider persistence, it's important to recognize that our biggest battle often lies within. Doubt, fear, and uncertainty are persistent adversaries. They whisper in our ears, telling us to give up, that it's easier to settle for less. But here's where our inner strength is tested. Do we succumb to these doubts, or do we push through them? The answer lies in our mindset. Cultivating a mindset of persistence involves affirming your abilities and your vision. It's about reinforcing your belief in your goals and your capacity to achieve them. This mental fortitude becomes the fuel that powers our persistence. Let me share with you a phrase that I've often found inspiring. This too shall pass. It's a reminder that no obstacle is permanent, no setback is everlasting. Challenges are transient, but our resolve to overcome them must be steadfast. We've discussed the significance of clear goals and the undeniable power of persistence.
Now let's turn our attention to an aspect that is foundational to actualizing these principles. Developing a strong work ethic. This is about cultivating a mindset and a set of strategies that not only inspire us to work hard, but also to work smart. Imagine you're planting a garden. You have the seeds, which are your goals, and persistence to water and tend to your plants. But without the right soil, the work ethic, those seeds may struggle to flourish. Developing a robust work ethic is about preparing that soil, ensuring that it's fertile and ready to support your growth. The first step in cultivating a strong work ethic is to understand its value. A solid work ethic is more than just working long hours or keeping busy. It's about purposeful and focused action. It's about choosing to invest your energy in tasks that align with your goals, tasks that are productive rather than merely busy work. It's the difference between treading water and swimming towards the shore. One effective strategy is to prioritize your tasks. Just as a gardener must know which plants need the most sunlight and water, you must discern which tasks will bring you closer to your goals. This is where the principle of prioritization comes in. Each day, identify the most critical tasks, your big rocks, and tackle them first. This ensures that your most valuable energy is spent on the most valuable tasks. Another key aspect of a strong work ethic is discipline. Discipline is the bridge between goals and accomplishment. It's easy to be motivated when you're inspired, but discipline is what keeps you going when that initial spark fades. Cultivating discipline can start with small habits. It could be as simple as waking up at the same time each day, or dedicating a specific time for focused work. Over time, these small acts of discipline accumulate and build a structure of productivity and efficiency. Now let's consider the mindset essential for a strong work ethic. This mindset is characterized by a few key attitudes. A commitment to continuous learning, a willingness to step out of your comfort zone, and resilience in the face of failure. Embrace the fact that there's always something new to learn. Adopt the perspective that challenges are opportunities to grow, and when faced with failure, see it as a lesson, not a setback. Another element of this mindset is the ability to stay focused and avoid distractions. In today's world, where distractions are constantly at our fingertips, the ability to concentrate on the task at hand has become a superpower. Cultivate this ability by creating an environment conducive to focus. It could be as simple as tidying your workspace, turning off notifications during work hours, or setting specific times for checking emails. Moreover, developing a strong work ethic isn't just about personal discipline. It's also about being aware of the impact of your work on others. This means understanding the broader context of your actions and how they contribute to the bigger picture. It's about recognizing that your work ethic can inspire those around you, creating a ripple effect of productivity and positivity. Incorporating these strategies into your daily life isn't an overnight process. It requires commitment and practice. It's about making a conscious decision every day to work towards your goals with intention and focus. It's about making the choice to do what's necessary, not just what's easy or comfortable. Let's also talk about the role of balance in developing a work ethic. While it's crucial to work hard, it's equally important to ensure that you're taking care of your physical and mental well-being. Burnout is a real risk, and it can derail your efforts towards your goals. Balance your hard work with periods of rest and activities that rejuvenate you. Remember, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Developing a strong work ethic is a journey. It's a process of building and strengthening habits, attitudes and skills that align with your goals. It's about making a commitment to yourself to pursue your goals with dedication and focus. It's like being the gardener who diligently tends to their garden, ensuring that the conditions are just right for their seeds, their goals, to grow and flourish. A critical aspect we must address is the inevitable presence of obstacles. It's not a matter of if they will appear, but rather when and how we choose to respond to them. The art of turning barriers into stepping stones is a skill that separates those who achieve their goals from those who merely dream about them. Picture a mountain climber preparing to ascend a daunting peak. They know the climb will be challenging. They anticipate the steep pass, the unpredictable weather, and the potential for setbacks. Yet, they proceed equipped with the knowledge, tools, and most importantly, the mindset to overcome these hurdles. This is the same approach we need to adopt in our lives. We must expect obstacles, prepare for them, and develop the mindset to use them to our advantage. Let's consider a common obstacle. Fear. This fear can paralyze us, holding us back from taking the necessary steps towards our goals. To overcome this fear, we must first acknowledge it. 
understand its roots, and then reframe it. Failure is not the opposite of success. It's a part of the success journey. Every failure brings with it valuable lessons and insights that can propel us forward if we choose to learn from them. Another frequent barrier is the resistance to change. Change is uncomfortable, it's uncertain, and it pushes us out of our comfort zones. However, growth and comfort do not coexist. Embracing change therefore becomes a stepping stone. It's about adopting a growth mindset where change is seen as an opportunity for development and advancement. Now let's talk about turning obstacles into opportunities. This requires a shift in perspective. Instead of viewing obstacles as roadblocks, view them as challenges to be solved, puzzles to be deciphered. This shift in mindset transforms the energy surrounding the obstacle. It becomes a source of motivation, a call to action to engage our creativity, resourcefulness, and determination. Consider the story of a small business owner faced with the obstacle of a declining market. Instead of giving up, they saw this as an opportunity to pivot their business model, to innovate, and to explore new markets. This obstacle became a catalyst for growth and expansion, leading to new avenues of success that would have remained unexplored otherwise. Another strategy to overcome obstacles is to break them down into smaller, more manageable parts. Often, obstacles seem insurmountable because we view them in their entirety. By breaking them down, we can create a step-by-step -step plan to tackle each part. This approach not only makes the obstacle more manageable, but also provides us with small wins along the way, boosting our confidence and momentum. In addition to breaking down obstacles, building a support system is crucial. Surrounding ourselves with mentors, peers, and a supportive community provides us with different perspectives, advice, and encouragement. These relationships can be invaluable in helping us navigate through challenging times. It's also essential to maintain a positive attitude in the face of obstacles. This doesn't mean ignoring the difficulties or pretending they don't exist. It means maintaining a hopeful and optimistic outlook, believing in our ability to overcome the challenges, and being open to the lessons they bring. Persistence plays a key role here. When faced with obstacles, the temptation to give up may arise. However, persisting through these challenges, staying committed to our goals, and continuously pushing forward is what leads to breakthroughs. Remember, the most significant achievements often come after the greatest challenges. Lastly, let's talk about resilience, the ability to bounce back from setbacks and obstacles. Building resilience involves taking care of our physical and mental health, learning from past experiences, and maintaining a balanced perspective on life's ups and downs. It's about developing the inner strength to withstand and emerge stronger from the trials we face. We've tackled the power of setting clear goals, the indomitable force of persistence, and transforming obstacles into opportunities. Now let's delve into a crucial aspect that acts as the backbone of these elements, the role of discipline in hard work. Imagine a great orchestra. Each musician is skilled, but it's their collective discipline that creates harmony. Without discipline, you have mere noise. But with it, you have a symphony. Similarly, in the pursuit of our goals, discipline is what harmonizes our skills, efforts and plans into a coherent path to success. Discipline, in its essence, is the ability to do what needs to be done even when you don't feel like doing it. It's easy to work hard when you're inspired or motivated, but what about those days when you're not? That's where discipline steps in. It's the inner strength that keeps you going regardless of the fluctuating tides of motivation. Think of discipline as a muscle. The more you exercise it, the stronger it gets. Start with small, manageable commitments. It could be as simple as waking up at a specific time each day, dedicating a set number of hours to your work, or committing to a regular exercise routine. Over time, these small acts of discipline build the foundation for more significant, more challenging commitments, leading to greater achievements. Consider the story of Thomas, an aspiring entrepreneur. When he started his journey, he was brimming with excitement and ideas. However, he soon realized that turning these ideas into reality required consistent, disciplined effort. It was discipline that got him up at dawn to work on his business plan, to network, to learn new skills, and to persist even when things didn't seem to be going his way. Thomas's journey was not unique, but his disciplined approach set him apart. Discipline also means prioritizing your time effectively. In a world filled with distractions, the disciplined mind focuses on tasks that align with one's goals. It's about saying no to unnecessary activities, 
and yes to actions that move you closer to your aspirations. Collective focus is not about deprivation. It's about choosing to invest your time where it counts. Another aspect of discipline is consistency. It's not the grand gestures, but the small daily actions that lead to success. Think of it as water carving its way through rock. It's not the force, but the constant drip that eventually creates a path. Similarly, your consistent efforts driven by discipline are your path to success. Discipline also requires setting and adhering to your own standards. It's about holding yourself accountable when you set a standard for your work and your life. Discipline ensures you meet it not out of obligation to others, but out of respect for your own commitments and values. Moreover, discipline is closely linked with self-awareness. It requires knowing your strengths and weaknesses, your tendencies to procrastinate, and your peaks and troughs of productivity. This awareness allows you to structure your efforts and environment in a way that maximizes your efficiency and effectiveness. It's also important to mention the role of self-compassion in discipline. Being disciplined does not mean being harsh or unforgiving to yourself. It's about understanding that the path to success is a journey with ups and downs. There will be times when you falter. Self-compassion allows you to acknowledge these moments without judgment, learn from them, and continue moving forward. Discipline, in its truest form, is a blend of commitment, focus, consistency, and self-awareness. It's about making a series of choices that align with your goals and values. And remember, discipline is not innate, it's developed. It's a skill you can cultivate starting right now with the choices you make every day. Understanding the importance of discipline and hard work. Let's now shift our focus to a topic that is often seen in a negative light, yet is an integral part of our growth and success. Learning from failures. The concept of failure is frequently associated with defeat and loss. However, I invite you to join me in redefining failure not as an end, but as a crucial step in the learning process, a stepping stone to success. Consider for a moment the process of learning to ride a bike. It's a journey filled with falls and stumbles, but with each fall, there's a lesson to be learned about balance, speed, and control. Each tumble teaches resilience and determination. Eventually, these lessons lead to the joy of effortlessly riding. Just like learning to ride a bike, each failure in our lives teaches us invaluable lessons that guide us toward our goals. Now let's explore the role of perspective in dealing with failures. The way we view failure determines how we respond to it. If we see failure as a final verdict on our abilities, it becomes a roadblock. But if we view it as a learning opportunity, it transforms into a tool for growth. Embracing this perspective requires a shift in mindset where failures are seen as feedback providing insights and directing our future efforts. There's a powerful lesson in the stories of great inventors, artists, and leaders who faced numerous failures before achieving remarkable success. Take, for example, the story of an inventor who faced hundreds of unsuccessful attempts before perfecting his creation. With each attempt, instead of getting discouraged, he gained valuable insights that eventually led to his breakthrough. His perseverance and willingness to learn from each failure were key to his eventual success. Failure also teaches resilience. The ability to bounce back after setbacks is crucial in our journey. This resilience is born from the understanding that failure is not a reflection of our worth, but a natural part of the learning process. It's about maintaining a steadfast commitment to our goals, despite the hurdles we encounter along the way. Another essential aspect of learning from failure is the practice of reflection. After experiencing a setback, take the time to analyze what happened, what worked, what didn't, and what could be done differently next time. This reflection turns the experience of failure into a valuable lesson. It's about extracting wisdom from our missteps and using it to refine our strategies and actions. It's also important to cultivate an environment where failure is seen as a part of the journey, not something to be ashamed of. This involves surrounding ourselves with supportive individuals who encourage learning from setbacks. It's about creating a culture whether in our personal lives or professional environments, where taking calculated risks is encouraged and failures are viewed as opportunities for growth. Let's not forget the role of humility in learning from failures. Humility allows us to accept our mistakes, to understand that we don't have all the answers, and to be open to new ideas and approaches. It's about being a lifelong learner, always curious, always willing to grow. Failure also teaches us about our strengths and limitations. It helps us understand where our talents lie 
and where we need to improve or seek help from others. This self-awareness is critical for personal and professional growth. It guides us in making informed decisions about where to focus our efforts and when to seek collaboration or mentorship. As we reflect upon the valuable lessons learned from our failures and embrace the discipline needed for hard work, let's turn our attention to a concept that is essential in our quest for success, the journey towards excellence. This journey is not a destination to be reached, but a continuous process of growth, learning, and improvement. Picture a master craftsman meticulously shaping and polishing a piece of fine wood. With every stroke, the wood's true beauty begins to emerge. This is a perfect metaphor for our journey towards excellence. It's a process that involves continually refining our skills, honing our talents, and improving ourselves in every aspect of our lives. Excellence is about setting high standards for ourselves and then striving to exceed them. It's about pushing beyond what we thought was possible and discovering new heights of performance and achievement. One of the key aspects of this journey is a commitment to lifelong learning. The world is constantly evolving, and to pursue excellence, we must evolve with it. This means staying curious, seeking new knowledge, and being open to new experiences and ideas. It's about embracing change not as a threat, but as an opportunity to grow. Another critical element in the journey towards excellence is the pursuit of mastery. Mastery is achieved through focus and consistent effort over time. It's about dedicating yourself to your craft, whether it's art, science, business, or any other field. It's not just about doing something well, it's about doing it better than it has ever been done before. This pursuit of excellence also requires resilience. There will be setbacks and challenges along the way, but these are not signs of failure. Instead, they are opportunities to learn, adapt, and emerge stronger. Resilience is what allows us to maintain our pursuit of excellence even in the face of adversity. In addition, the journey towards excellence involves cultivating a mindset of continuous improvement. It's about constantly asking ourselves, how can I do this better? It's a mindset that doesn't settle for good enough but seeks to make good even better. This quest for continuous improvement is what drives innovation and progress. Let's also consider the importance of passion in our journey towards excellence. Passion is the fuel that keeps us going when the journey gets tough. It's the inner fire that ignites our creativity and drives our ambition. When we are passionate about what we do, we bring a level of energy and enthusiasm that can propel us to new heights of excellence. Furthermore, the journey towards excellence is not a solitary one. It involves learning from others, mentors, peers, and even competitors. It's about being open to feedback and using it as a tool for growth. Collaborating with others, sharing ideas, and learning from their experiences can significantly enhance our own journey towards excellence. As we embark on this journey, it's important to remember that excellence is not about perfection. Perfection is an elusive and often unattainable goal. Excellence, on the other hand, is about doing the best we can with what we have. It's about continuous improvement, not about reaching a state of flawlessness. As we reach the culmination of our discourse, having journeyed through the essential components of hard work, discipline, learning from failures, and the continuous pursuit of excellence, it's fitting to reflect on the ultimate reward of hard work. This reward transcends tangible outcomes. It embodies a deeper, more fulfilling sense of achievement and personal fulfillment. The true reward of hard work is not just in the goals achieved or the successes celebrated. It lies in the person you become through this relentless pursuit. Every challenge faced, every obstacle overcome, and every setback turned into a comeback shapes you into a stronger, more resilient, and more capable individual. This transformation, this evolution into your best self, is perhaps the greatest reward hard work offers. Consider the immense satisfaction that comes from looking back at a journey fraught with challenges, knowing that you navigated it with perseverance and tenacity. There's a profound sense of accomplishment in realizing how far you've come, not just in terms of your goals, but in your personal growth. This reflection often brings a deeper level of joy and contentment than any external accolade. Moreover, the reward of hard work extends to the impact you have on others. Through your journey, you inspire those around you. Your story becomes a beacon of hope and encouragement for others to pursue their dreams, face their fears, and overcome their challenges. The ripple effect of your hard work and dedication can change lives, influence destinies, and shape futures.
Another significant aspect of the reward of hard work is the development of a legacy. This legacy is not necessarily about wealth or fame. It's about the values you embody and the example you set. It's about leaving behind a legacy of commitment, integrity, and resilience. It's about being remembered not just for what you achieved, but for how you achieved it, and the difference you made in the lives of others. Hard work also brings the reward of self-mastery. Through the discipline and effort exerted in your endeavors, you gain a deeper understanding of yourself. You discover your strengths and confront your weaknesses. You learn the art of self-control, the power of focus, and the beauty of unwavering determination. This self-mastery is a key ingredient in achieving lasting happiness and fulfillment. As we embrace the path of hard work, let us do so with the understanding that the true reward lies beyond the visible successes. It resides in the journey itself, in the lessons learned, the character built, and the lives touched. Let us move forward with the knowledge that our efforts, our resilience, and our dedication will not only lead us to our desired destinations, but will also enrich our lives in ways we never imagined. The reward of hard work is a life well lived, a legacy of excellence, and the profound satisfaction of knowing that we gave our best to become the best version of ourselves. Let this be our motivation, our driving force, as we continue to strive, grow, and achieve. When I discovered the idea of continuous learning, I thought it was a miracle. I came from a poor home where we never had any money. When I left school without graduating, my first job was washing dishes in the back of a small hotel. When I lost that job, I got a job washing cars in the wintertime, you know what that's like. When I lost that job, I got a job washing floors with a janitorial service, and I thought washing was in my future. So I traveled and worked on farms, in construction, at laboring jobs, digging wells, in factories stacking lumber, on a ship in the North Atlantic, and at various other laboring jobs until I was 23 years old. And when I could no longer get a laboring job, like many people here, I got a job in sales. And in sales, I was a complete failure because I had no training. So, for six months, I worked and worked and worked, and I was making no success at all. I say starting off in sales with no skills is a wonderful weight loss program. Because if you don't sell, you don't eat. And I lost a lot of weight in those six months. Well, this whole thing about finding your passion is motivational claptrap. The way that you find your passion is whatever job you have to do. Throw your whole heart into it. And this has been discovered for centuries. Throw your whole heart into what you're doing, and you'll find out very quickly if this is the right work for you. If it's not, you won't get any excitement or happiness from it, and something will change. Many people don't realize that until you throw your whole heart into something, you don't get anything back. And so, what they do, is they say, Well, I'll try this and see if it works. I read this wonderful line two weeks ago. Every so often I come across a great line. It said, This work is never fun until you're good at it. And so, when you begin at a job, it may take you a year or two of hard work to become good at what you're doing. And it becomes fun. Then, it becomes your passion. And maybe we say, Oh, find my passion, find my passion. No, do your job right. Do it really well and get really good at it. And if when you're really good at it, if you still don't enjoy it, then look for something else. Tap your creative potential. Accept the fact that every single human being is a genius, and all successful men and women are creative. They're creative in that they respond to their world differently. They ask questions. They're flexible. They're curious. You know what the hallmark of creativity is? Curiosity. The hallmark of ignorance and stupidity is the cessation or stopping from asking questions. I've worked with some of the brightest men and women in this nation, and I find that the smartest people of all, the ones that have the greatest education and the most experience, are the ones who ask the most questions. They ask questions almost as if they were children. But they never stop asking questions. They're very open and flexible, and they have the ability once they learn a new piece of information to drop what they're doing, if the new information contradicts it, and do something else. You know what most people do? Most people keep on doing what they're doing until they run to a wall as they say. The more you do what you're doing, the more you'll get of what you've got. Someone reported out to me not long ago, and I think it's very true, is that all changes in our life come with the input of new information. That if we do not have new information, that if we do not have new information, we keep on doing the same thing forever as a result of inertia. And creative people are always looking for faster, better, easier, 
cheaper, newer ways to do things. Remember, 80% of everything that we are doing today, and are doing today in our general business, will be different five years from now. 80% of the products that we use, the food that we eat, the cars we drive, the music we listen to, the movies we go to, even the streets we drive on, 80% of everything will be new in five years. That's how rapidly things are changing. Warren Buffett spends 80% of his time studying every day, and he's one of the richest people in the history of the world because he keeps learning new things. When I came across continuous learning, almost like tripping over something in the dark, I couldn't believe it. What it said was that you can learn anything you need to learn to achieve any goal you can set for yourself. There are no limitations on what you could learn. You have more potential than that you could use in a hundred lifetimes. You can learn anything. This, to me, was the greatest of all discoveries. There are no limits on the kind of life you can have because you can learn anything you need to learn. As long as you continuously learn new things. And what's the magic formula? 10 hours a week. Read a little bit each day in your field. Listen to audio programs when you travel around. Go to seminars and take notes. Write down actions that you can take immediately afterwards. And just dedicate your life to becoming a student for the rest of your life. Every day, you should be learning something new. Learning should be as much a part of your life as eating, sleeping, and breathing. And if you'll do that, you start to go up the ladder of success faster and faster. You feel happier and happier. People respect you and look up to you. You feel that you have more energy, and your self-esteem goes up, your self-image improves, and you get it all from continuous learning, which is why these people go from the bottom to the top, and they're very happy people. They're very highly respected, and they feel wonderful about themselves because growing and becoming better in your field is one of the most happiest and wonderful things you can do. Here are the keys to continuous learning. First of all, read 60 minutes a day. I will say this over and over again, 60 minutes per day over the course of a year, two years, three years, will make you one of the top people in your field. Listen to audio cassettes in your car. Listen to audio cassettes. Here's what most people don't realize. They don't realize that they are not on vacation when they're in their car. If they're traveling between calls and between clients or between customers, they're not on vacation when they get into their car. They're still working. And the worst thing you can do is turn your mind off and park it and listen to something that's chewing gum for the years. What you do when you're driving is you learn at the same time. Listen to audio programs in your car. Turn your car into a mobile classroom. Turn your car into a university on wheels. Now, a study at the University of California, USC, concluded that if you listen to educational audio programs in your car as you drive around, instead of listening to music, which we call chewing gum for the years, if you listen to audio programs, you'll get the equivalent of almost full-time university attendance. Except for one small point. When you go to the university, people have graduated from universities that I eventually did find that about 90 or 95 percent of what they teach you is not practical. It's theoretical. It's enjoyable. But it's useless in the real world. However, when you select educational audio programs on sales, communication, time management, goal setting for yourself, which you can stop and start if you like, you only select things that are valuable to you in the moment. So you get even more than a university education by turning your car into a classroom on wheels. You turn your car into a mobile learning machine. Human beings are very much like they have what is called a cybernetic guidance mechanism, like a guided missile. A guided missile is fired at the target, and even if the target moves, the missile takes feedback and adjusts its course and hits the target. You have a cybernetic mechanism where you are learning. You are a learning machine. The more activities you engage in, the faster you learn. And pretty soon, you become so smart that you can hit the target almost every time. You can learn new skills, but it's like a car. You cannot change a car's engine by changing the paint on the outside. You can learn new skills if you're ambitious and positive and you want to be more successful, and you're eager to learn and apply new ideas. There's no limit to what you can do. But your basic personality, that's like your eye color, it's like your height, it's even like your sex. You cannot change these. These are basic parts that are programmed into your personality. So don't try to change people. If people are lazy when they're young, they'll be lazy 50 years later. If people are dishonest, they'll be dishonest. If people are unorganized, they'll be unorganized. However, if they have good qualities, good ambitions, you can teach them all kinds of skills. Skills are very different from personality. Did you ever wonder, Ed, 
is that some people make far more in the world, where some people can be making one, two, three, four, five, ten times as much as another person doing the same job. Many times we see salespeople who are making ten times as much as a person next to them in the next desk, selling the same product, the same product under the same price, under the same competitive circumstances. Why does this happen? Well, about 30 years ago, as you know, I began studying and looking for the reasons for success and failure. And one of the things that I found is that there are formulas. There are specific methods applied and used by very successful people. And if you use the same methods, law of cause and effect, you start to get the same result. And the more I study it, the more I realize this, that everybody who's at the front of the line once started at the back of the line. But everybody who's doing well was once doing poorly. Everybody who was first was once last. How did they get to be first? And it's very simple. It is called the law of incremental improvement, the law of continuous improvement. It's a very simple thing. You see, most of us, with no education, no knowledge, no skills, we go to school, we learn how to read and write and so on, we start our jobs, and in our careers, we have the knowledge, we have no skills. Each time we start something new, we have to go back to the back of the line. Why do some people get to the front of the line? It's very simple, because they learn the things that the other people learn. Another one, it is really the way that every single person has gone from nothing to being successful, is continuous learning. Continuous learning, I believe, is the most important single key to success. It's what makes America the greatest country in the world. Why? It's because you could come here with nothing, and by simply focusing clearly on what you want, and then finding out who else has gotten the same things you want, and then learning from what they did, and doing the same things over and over again, you'll eventually get the same result. In fact, the rule today is that continuous learning is the minimum requirement for success in a new field. Whatever field you're in today, if you do not engage in continuous learning the same way you brush your teeth every day, you take a shower every day, if you don't engage in continuous learning every day, what will happen is that you'll be passed by by the people who do. In America today, an incredible shift has taken place. The shift is between those who know more, and those who know less. We no longer live in a physical economy. We live in a mental economy. We live in an economy where brain power is the critical tool for earning a great living. And continuous learning is the only way to continue building your brain power. Attend every seminar possible. Get all the training you can. And of course, listen at every opportunity. You'll learn more in a few weeks watching this network than you might learn in years trying to pick it up by yourself. There's a rule that your television can make you rich or it can make you poor. It can make you rich if you turn it off, and it's made you poor if you turn it on. Years of research, this is my subject, shows that the more you watch television, the lower your income, unless you watch television, the higher your income. And it's always a choice you make anyway. So, two hours a night would work out to about a book a week, plus other things. And then during the day, practice the things you learn. And pretty soon, you move on to the fast track. Pretty soon you start to move ahead of everybody else in your career. Pretty soon you start to become much more valuable, your earning ability goes up. So, I want you to think of a ladder of success and imagine a ladder. And each rung on the ladder is a new skill. The rule is, you cannot achieve a new goal without learning a new skill. So, each one is a new skill. Each time you master a skill, you move up the ladder, and your income goes up. And then you learn a new skill. And this is what they would do. They would work for a month, or three months, or a year, however long it took to become excellent in a single skill. They would not try to become excellent in multiple skills, just one skill. And then once they had mastered that skill and people said, you know, you're pretty good at that, that would be their signal. Now what's my next skill? And they would work on the next skill, take the next step, and the next step. And they would just keep climbing the ladder of success. Now, if ever you stop climbing the ladder, do you know what happens? You level off, and then you begin to decline because your existing skills become obsolete at a faster rate today than ever before. So, you keep climbing the ladder. If you stop, other people who are climbing their ladders will go past you, and pretty soon, you'll fall so far behind, it's like you're in a marathon. Let's say you're in a marathon with lots of runners, and you decide, well, you're going to stop and you're just going to stroll for a while, you're just going to stroll for a while, you're just going to rest, you don't want to work too hard, and then you decide, well, I think I'll start running again. 
What happens? You never catch up because the other people just kept on running. They're so far ahead of you, you never catch up. Now these seem like very simple explanations, but they do describe success versus failure. Now here's the interesting thing. Life is very much like a marathon. We all start off with the same line. We're all ready to go, and we start running. Everybody's got pretty much the same abilities and the same opportunities. We go to the same schools, we go to the same colleges. And yet some people get way, way ahead. The masses stay in the middle, and some people fall so far behind, they think they're first. And so, why is this? Well, this has been studied for year after year, and we find this one single difference, just the way you think. I was listening to somebody who grew up in a small town, and he was talking about this interesting point. He said he came from a poor family, and there were three families in that town that owned everything. They owned the mill, and they owned the factory, and they owned the general store, and they owned the shipping, and they owned the trucking, and they owned the agricultural processing. They owned everything. And these three families were rich. They had beautiful homes. Everybody revered them and talked about them. They were on the bank boards and everything else. And he went to school with the kids from these three families. And you know, everybody wanted to be their friends. Of course, you remember those days. And he found they're quite normal kids. They weren't very different from anybody else. But somehow, these families owned everything. And it was a real shock to him. It wasn't their education because they weren't getting a better education than he was. It wasn't their grades because the grades were the same. It certainly wasn't their physical attractions or anything else. It was just one thing. If they thought differently, they had an attitude of looking for opportunities and possibilities. And what we have found in a series of articles in Inc. Here magazine, they were interviewing people who'd become fabulously successful, rags to riches stories. Every one of them said the only reason I succeeded is because I developed the habit of always looking for the opportunity. Always looking for something good or positive in what I was doing. Whereas other people, they have a setback. Oh my God. And they go home and drink and watch television and so on. But successful people are always looking for the opportunity. They think differently. So, when you learn to think better, you make better decisions. You get better results. The law of cause and effect says that for every effect in your life, there's a cause. Everything happens for a reason. Even if you don't know the reason, there's a reason. If somebody's practice is twice as large as somebody else's practice, it's not because of you or your genetics or your DNA or your chromosomes or anything else. It's just because they're doing something different, that's all. So, what you do is if you can define the effect that you want in your life, and then what you do is you trace it back to someone who at one time was earning less than you, and who's now earning twice as much. And then you find out what they did. You come here and you ask Ed and his people and they'll tell you. And then you do the same thing. You see success leads tracks, leaves tracks. You just do the same thing, and you get to the same place. Which brings us to one of the great rules of success. If you do what other successful people do over and over again until it becomes a habit, Nothing in the world can stop you from getting the same results that they do. And if you don't, nothing can help you. Now this is a very important point to understand. All success skills are learnable. All practice development and management skills are learnable skills. All sales skills are learnable. All public relations skills are learnable. Their all physical and mental skills are learnable. You may not be able to play a classical violin or dunk baskets like Michael Jordan, but all business and sales and management skills are learnable skills. And so therefore you can learn any skill you need to learn in order to achieve any goal that you want. And once you understand that, for me, that happened to me when I was 23. The dam broke when I learned this law of cause and effect. Leave it. My God, you could learn to be successful. So, I'm going to teach you a go forward word. And this is the word that you're going to use for the rest of your career. This is the word that will guarantee that you'll get onto the fast track in life. You'll increase your income at a more rapid rate than the average person and you'll take complete control of your life. And the word is how. You want to double your income? The only question you ask is how. You want to double the number of patients coming to your practice? Your question is how. You want to double your profitability? The question is how. Your question is how to solve a problem. The question is how. Now whenever you ask the question how, it's like stepping on the accelerator of your own creative mind. You step in, and it throws off ideas like those little lightning strikes in the cartoons or the light bulbs. And every idea is for an action that you can take right now. 
Whenever you ask the question how, you get ideas. And the interesting thing is, they did a study at Harvard. They found that the greatest single predictor of success, especially financial success in life, is creativity. And creativity is determined by the number of ideas you come up with. And you'll find that the more ideas you come up with, because of the law of probabilities, the more likely it is you come up with a great idea. No matter what has happened in the past, the future is unlimited. It's only limited by your imagination. And here are my three predictions for you. Number one, you are going to make more money in the future than you have ever made in your life before. The financial possibilities for you in the future are unlimited. Number two, you're going to have greater happiness and success in the future than you have ever had in your life today. And number three, your greatest achievements in life lie in the future. And the future is limited only by your own imagination. So, there is no limit to what you can be and do in the future. Thank you. All improvement in your life comes from changing your beliefs about yourself and your possibilities. Personal growth comes from changing your beliefs about what you can do and about what is possible for you. Would you like to double your income? Of course you would. Here's the question. Do you believe that it is possible? How would you like to triple your income? Do you believe that that is possible as well? Whatever your level of skepticism, let me ask you a question. Since you started your first job, haven't you already doubled or tripled your income? Aren't you already earning vastly more than you earned when you started? Haven't you already proven to yourself that it is possible to double and triple your income? And what you have done before, you can do again, and probably over and over if you just learn how. You simply have to believe that it is possible. Napoleon Hill said, Whatever the mind of man can conceive and believe, it can achieve. Perhaps the greatest breakthrough in the 20th century in the field of human potential was the discovery of the self-concept. Everything you do or achieve in your life, every thought, feeling or action, is controlled and determined by your self-concept. Your self-concept predicts your levels of performance and effectiveness in everything you do. It is the master program of your mental computer, the basic operating system. Everything that you accomplish in your outer world is a result of your self-concept. What psychologists have discovered is that your self-concept is made up of the sum total of all your beliefs, attitudes, feelings, and opinions about yourself and your world. Because of this, you always operate in a manner consistent with your self-concept, whether positive or negative. Here's an interesting discovery about the self-concept. Even if your self-concept is made up of erroneous beliefs about yourself or your world, as far as you are concerned, these are facts, and you will think, feel, and act accordingly. As it happens, your beliefs about yourself are largely subjective. They are often not based on fact at all. They are the result of information you have taken in throughout your life, and the way you have processed that information. Your beliefs have been shaped and formed by your early childhood, your friends and associates, your reading and education, your experiences, both positive and negative, and a thousand other factors. The worst of all beliefs are self-limiting beliefs. If you believe yourself to be limited in some way, whether or not it is true, it becomes true for you. If you believe it, you will act as if you were deficient in that particular area of talent or skill. Overcoming self-limiting beliefs and self-imposed limitations is often the biggest obstacle standing between you and the realization of your full potential. Albert Einstein was sent home from school as a young man with a learning disability. His parents were told that he was incapable of being educated. They refused to accept this diagnosis and eventually arranged for him to get an excellent education. Dr. Albert Schweitzer had the same problems at school as a boy. His parents were encouraged to apprentice him to a shoemaker so that he would have a safe, secure job when he grew up. Both men went on to earn doctorates before the ages of 20 and to leave their marks on the history of the 20th century. According to an article in Fortune magazine on learning disabilities in business, many presidents and senior executives of Fortune 500 corporations today were diagnosed in school as being not particularly bright or capable. But by virtue of hard work, they went on to achieve great success in their industries. Thomas Edison was expelled from school in the sixth grade. His parents were told that it would be a waste of time to spend any money educating him because he was not particularly smart or capable of being taught in anything. Edison went on to become the greatest inventor of the modern age. This kind of story has been repeated thousands of times. Self-limiting beliefs, sometimes based on a single experience or a casual remark, can hold you back for years.
Almost everyone has had the experience of mastering a skill in an area where they thought they had no ability, and being quite surprised at themselves. Perhaps this has happened to you. You suddenly realize that your limiting ideas about yourself in that area were not based on fact at all. Louise Hay, the writer, says that the roots of most of our problems in life are contained in the feeling, I'm not good enough. Dr. Alfred Adler said that it is the natural inheritance of Western men to have feelings of inferiority that start in childhood and often continue through adult life. Many people, because of their negative beliefs, most of which are erroneous, falsely consider themselves to be limited in intelligence, talent, capability, creativity, or skill of some kind. In virtually every case, these beliefs are false. The fact is that you have more potential than you could ever use in your entire lifetime. No one is better than you, and no one is smarter than you. People are just smarter or better in different areas at different times. According to Dr. Howard Gardner of Harvard University, the founder of the concept of multiple intelligences, you are possessed of at least 10 different intelligences, in any one of which you might be a genius. Unfortunately, only two intelligences are measured and reported throughout school and university, verbal and mathematical. But you could be a genius in the areas of physiospatial intelligence, art, design, entrepreneurial intelligence, business startups, physical or kinesthetic intelligence, sports, musical intelligence, playing musical instruments, writing music, interpersonal intelligence, getting along well with others, intrapersonal intelligence, understanding yourself at a deep level, intuitive intelligence, ability to sense the right thing to do or say, artistic intelligence, creating works of art, or abstract intelligence, physics, science. As the saying on the wall of an inner city school reads, God don't make no junk. Each person is capable of achieving excellence in some way, in some area. You have within you right now the ability to function at genius or exceptional levels in at least one and perhaps several different intelligences. Your job is to find out what it could be for you. Your responsibility to yourself is to cast off all these self-limiting beliefs and accept that you are an extraordinarily capable and talented person. You are engineered for greatness and designed for success. You have competencies and capabilities that have never been tapped. You have the ability within yourself right now to accomplish almost any goal you can set for yourself, if you are willing to work long enough and hard enough to achieve it. The good news about beliefs is that all beliefs are learned. They can therefore be unlearned, especially if they are not helpful. When you came into the world, you had no beliefs at all about yourself, your religion, your political party, other people, or the world in general. Today, you know a lot of things, but as the comic Josh Billings once wrote, it ain't what a man knows that hurts him, it's what he knows that ain't true. There are many things that you know about yourself that are simply not true, and these are almost always in the area of self-limiting beliefs. The starting point of unlocking more of your potential is for you to identify your self-limiting beliefs and then ask, what if they were not true at all? What if you were possessed of an extraordinary ability in an area where you didn't think you were very good at all? Such as selling, entrepreneurship, public speaking, or money making. Everywhere I go throughout the world, I have taught these principles to many tens of thousands of people. I have filing drawers full of letters and emails from people who had never heard this idea of self-limiting beliefs before. But once they heard it, they changed their entire attitudes towards themselves. They began to see themselves as far more confident and capable in key areas of their lives than they had ever been before. In no time at all, they began transforming their lives and changing their results. Their incomes doubled and tripled and quadrupled. Many of them became millionaires and multimillionaires. They went from the bottom of their companies to the top, from the worst performer in their sales forces to the highest earning person in their companies. After they changed their beliefs about themselves and their personal potentials, they learned new skills and took on new challenges. They set bigger goals and threw their whole hearts into achieving them. By questioning their beliefs, and by refusing to accept that they were limited in any way, they took complete charge of their lives and careers, and created new realities for themselves. And what countless others have done, you can do as well. Imagine that there was a belief store, very much like a computer software store, that you could visit and purchase a belief to program into your subconscious mind. If you could choose any set of beliefs at all, which beliefs would be the most helpful to you? Here's my suggestion. Select this belief. I am destined to be a big success in life. If you absolutely believe that you are destined to be a big success, you will walk, talk, 
and act as if everything that happens to you in life is part of a great plan to make you successful. And as it happens, this is how the top people think in every field. Top people look for the good in every situation. They know that it is always there, no matter how many reversals and setbacks they experience. They expect to get something good out of everything that happens to them. They believe that every setback is part of a great plan that is moving them inexorably toward achieving the great success that is inevitable for them. If your beliefs are positive enough, you will seek the valuable lesson in every setback or difficulty. You will confidently believe that there are many things that you have to learn on the road to achieving and keeping your ultimate success. You, therefore, look upon every problem as a learning experience. Napoleon Hill wrote, Within every difficulty or obstacle, there is the seed of an equal or greater advantage or benefit. With this kind of attitude, you benefit from everything that happens to you, positive or negative, as you move upward and onward toward achieving your major definite purpose. There's a law of reversibility in psychology and metaphysics that says you are more likely to act yourself into feeling a particular way than you are to feel yourself into acting. What this means is that when you start off, you may not feel like the great success that you desire to be. You will not have the self-confidence that comes from a record of successful achievement. You will often doubt your own abilities and fear failure. You will feel that you are not good enough, at least not yet. But if you act as if you were already the person you desire to be, with the qualities and talents that you desire to have, your actions will generate the feelings that go with them. You will actually act yourself into feeling the way you want to feel, by the law of reversibility. If you want to be one of the top people in your business, dress like the top people, groom like the top people, organize your work habits the way they do, pick the most successful people in your field, and use them as your role models. If possible, go to them, and ask them for advice on how to get ahead more rapidly, and whatever advice they give you, follow it immediately. Take action. When you start to walk, talk, dress, and behave like the top people, you soon begin to feel like the top people. You will treat other people like the top people do. You will work the way the top people work. You will start to get the results that the top people get. In no time at all, you will be one of the top people yourself. Maybe you've heard the saying, fake it till you make it. But there is a lot of truth to it. A friend of mine is a very successful sales manager. After he had carefully interviewed and then selected a new salesman, he would take the salesman to a Cadillac dealership and insist that he trade in his old car for a new Cadillac. The salesman would usually balk at the idea. He would be frightened of the cost of the car and the huge monthly payments involved. But the sales manager would insist that he buy the Cadillac as a condition of employment. What do you think happened afterwards? First, the salesman would drive the car home, and his wife would almost have a heart attack when she saw that he had bought a new Cadillac. But after she had settled down, he would take her for a ride around the neighborhood in the new Cadillac. The neighbors would see them driving in a new Cadillac, and as he waved on the way past, he would park his new Cadillac in front of his house or in his driveway. People would come over and admire it. Gradually, imperceptibly, at a subconscious level, his attitude toward himself and his earning potential would begin to change. Within a few days, he began to see himself as the kind of person who drove a new Cadillac. He saw himself as a big money earner in his field. He saw himself as one of the top performers in his industry. And time after time, almost without fail, average salespeople in this organization became sales superstars. Their sales performance jumped, and they earned more than they had ever before. Soon, the payments on the new Cadillac were of no concern because their incomes were so much greater. Emmett Fox, the spiritual teacher, once said that your main job in life is to create the mental equivalent within yourself of what you want to realize and enjoy in your outer world. Your focus must be on creating the beliefs within yourself that are consistent with the great success you want to be in your outer world. You achieve this by challenging your self-limiting beliefs, rejecting them, and then acting as if they did not exist. You reinforce the development of new, life-enhancing beliefs by increasing your knowledge and skills in your field to the point where you feel equal to any demand or challenge. You accelerate the development of new positive beliefs by setting bigger and more exciting goals in every area. Finally, you act continually as if you were already the person that you desire to be. Your aim is to reprogram your subconscious mind for success by creating the mental equivalent in everything you do or say. You develop new beliefs by taking actions consistent with those beliefs. You act as if you already believe that you have these capabilities and competences. You behave like a positive, optimistic, and cheerful person toward everyone.
You act as if your success were already guaranteed. You act as if you have a secret guarantee of success and only you know about it. You realize that you are developing, shaping, and controlling the evolution of your own character and personality by everything that you do and say every single day. Since you become what you think about, you should only say and do those things that are consistent with your ideal self, the person you most aspire to be, and your long-term future ideals. You should only think and talk about the things that are moving you toward becoming the person you want to be, and toward achieving the goals that you want to achieve. Make a decision this very day to challenge and reject any self-limiting beliefs that you might have that could be holding you back. Look into yourself and question the areas of your life where you have doubts about your abilities or talents. You might ask your friends and family members if they see any negative beliefs that you might have. Often they will be aware of negative self-limiting beliefs you have that you're not aware of yourself. In every case, once you have identified these negative beliefs, ask yourself, what if the opposite were true? What if you had the ability to be extraordinarily successful in an area where you currently doubt yourself? What if you had been programmed from infancy with genius ability in a particular area? For example, what if you had within you right now the ability to earn and keep all the money you could ever want throughout your life? What if you had a golden touch with regard to money? If you absolutely believe these things to be true, what would you do differently from what you are doing today? Your beliefs are always manifested in your words and actions. Make sure that everything you say and do from now on is consistent with the beliefs that you want to have and the person that you want to become. In time, you will replace more and more of your self-limiting beliefs with life-enhancing beliefs. Over time, you will completely reprogram yourself for success. When this occurs, the transformation that takes place in your outer life will amaze you and all the people around you.